let me explain first of all how I think something like this happens. So, uh, so there are two things going on here. One is um, I'm a good person, and the people I work with, because they're my colleagues, are good people. So therefore, the company I work for must be a good company, and they wouldn't ask me to do anything wrong. So what I'm being asked to do must be okay, and everybody's doing it. So I think, I mean, I don't, I think it's a very rare individual who says, I'm a bad person and I'm going to do a bad thing. Very rare. Very rare. We all come up with a version of ourselves and the world in which we are good people. So that's part of what happens. And the other thing that happens, because you know, the thing that's so striking about this scandal is the vast scale on which it happened, is I think this issue of conformity is exactly what's happening. I don't think anybody sees themselves making the wrong choice. They simply don't experience it. Um, there's some in other interesting fMRI studies uh, where people have read stories about decision making. And what's so striking about that is that the individuals in the experiments don't notice the moral choice. They simply don't see the moment at which it occurs. So they're asked to do a little, you know, just go and call John, and John's a private investigator, and if, I, if the private investigator says, can I hire one of my guys, he's really good with phones, well, yeah, I guess that's okay. You know, it's all chopped into small steps. Nobody except maybe the person at the very end is doing it, and he's not responsible, so he doesn't feel it's his moral problem. And at no point does anybody feel, I am actively doing a bad thing. And it can happen on a big scale because everybody's only doing tiny parts of it. So what would have prevented it? Well, what would have prevented it was, would be leadership reading, picking up a paper saying, this is really strange. How did we get this story? That's what would have prevented it. But I think you also have to understand that this takes place within an economic climate where newspapers' readership is falling, the competition for eyeballs and money is fiercer than ever, then there is a fierce race to the bottom, a fierce competitive environment in which everybody's trying to outscream everybody else. And I think part of what was going on, and you see this still, is a complete lack of faith that a good product will sell. So there, there is, a, and, and this comes straight from the top, you know, and, and, and both Murdoch's, you know, Pa and Son, have been very, very explicit about this, which is, you know, as James Murdoch said, the only guarantor of independence is profit, and the only reason you British people want quality is because you're class snobs, and I'm going to give people what they want. And, you know, in a very competitive marketplace, if you believe that giving people more and more scandalous news is what will sell papers, then that is what a competitive marketplace will deliver. So I think that's how it happens. You know, what prevents it, what prevents the economic market conditions in which this happens, um, we'll have to wait and see. Because I think, you know, personally, I think the newspaper industry has raced itself almost completely to the bottom now. And the question is whether that will happen with television and other media as well.